Hello, and we want to welcome all of you to today's online travel presentation, Experience Scotland by Rail. My name is Kristen Stewart, and I'll be your moderator for today's presentation. We understand this is not an easy time to travel, but this is a perfect time to start cracking open those travel books and prepping where you want to be. Before we begin today's travel presentation, I would like to go over a few things. First, we will hold all questions until the end. If you do have questions during the presentation, please type them in the question box in the GoToWebinar toolbar, and we will cover them at the very end. Second, we will have two questions during this presentation, and we encourage you to participate by submitting your answer in the GoToWebinar question box. And lastly, this webinar will be recorded and will be available after the presentation. So I want to start off by uh, letting you get to know us a little bit. Um, and my name is Kristen Stewart, and I am the marketing coordinator for Vacations by Rail and the moderator, the moderator for this online travel presentation. And shortly, you will meet Graham Nichols, Vacations by Rail's rail specialist and your presenter today. So I'm going to uh, open up our first question. Have you ever visited Scotland? I'll give you a few seconds to submit your answers and let, you, and let us know your feedback. So it looks like so far the majority of you have said no, which is just fine because whether you have or not, we're going to introduce some of our amazing Scotland products to give you some inspiration for your next trip. But before we do that, I want to start by uh, telling you a little bit about us. In addition to the wide variety of vacations we offer around the globe, we also offer best in class customer care with a dedicated rail specialist to assist you from your first call until you return home from your vacation. We are the leading rail vacations company in the United States, offering the largest selection of independent rail vacations, escorted rail tours, rail cruise combinations, and luxury rail journeys. We are the trusted authority on rail and a member of the National Tour Association and the American Bus Association with a Better Business Bureau A plus rating. We are also AARP's preferred rail provider. We are a great rail journeys company backed with backed by more than 45 years of experience in the specialty of global rail vacations. And we deliver unmatched vacations with first class customer service to destinations around the globe. We also offer extensive vacation options around the world, aboard the world's iconic trains, excuse me. So next I'm going to go into why a, why a rail vacation. It is a unique way to see parts of the country not accessible through other modes of transportation. You leave the navigation and driving to someone else. You mix iconic trains with fantastic destinations and improve sightseeing. Rail travel is an integral part of the vacation experience, not just a travel component. There's no need to stop for meals or overnight accommodations. Everything is available for you from start to finish. A rail vacation is a great way to meet people from all over the globe. And Rail travel uses less carbon emission than other modes of transportation, so it's a very eco-friendly way of traveling. And then included in every Vacations by Rail vacation is an outstanding rail component ranging from overnight trains to scenic heritage railways, comfortable accommodations centrally located within national parks or in the heart of large cities, comprehensive sightseeing offering one-of-a-kind of experiences, insider experiences and local expertise, and finally, exceptional customer service from agents who specialize in rail. So getting into our products, I would like to introduce Graham Nichols, your presenter today, who is going to tell you a little bit about some of the products we offer. Hi, Graham. Hi, Kristen, thank you. Hello, everyone, my name's Graham, and as Kristen said, I'm one of our rail specialists, uh, here to talk you through a selection of our Scotland tours. Uh, so we'll start with a couple of rail journeys that are included on a lot of our Scotland tours. And this is the probably the most iconic of those, the Jacobite steam train, uh, which in recent years has become more famously known as the Harry Potter train. Uh, the train takes around two hours in total and runs from Fort William to Malague, going, going across the Glenfinnan viaduct, uh, which you can see in the picture. Uh, next, we have the West Highland Line, uh, which begins at Glasgow's Queen Street Station uh, and continues up the west coast of Scotland to Crianlarich. 
On the journey, the train skirts the beautiful Loch Long, followed by Loch Lomond, uh, which is Britain's largest body of inland water. Uh, continuing northward, the train climbs more than 500 feet through the highlands in just five miles before arriving in Crian Larrick. At this point, the line splits into two branches, uh, one heading west to Oban uh, and the other continuing north to Malague and Fort William. So following on from this, we are going to look at one of our most popular tours that we run, uh, which is our Edinburgh, the Highlands and Islands. So this is a nine day, eight night tour, which begins and ends in Edinburgh. It is, it is an escorted tour, which means you'll be traveling as part of a group and you'll be fully escorted by a tour manager from start to finish. So as I mentioned, the tour begins in Edinburgh, where you will spend your first night of the trip before taking the train from Edinburgh to Glasgow on day two. From here, you will travel on the West Highland Line up to Balakulish, where you will stay for three nights. On day three, we head down to Oban and make the 40 minute ferry crossing to the Isle of Mull, enjoying the stunning views on the way. Once on Mull, we visit Dewart Castle overlooking Loch Don, and after returning to the mainland, you will, you will enjoy a whiskey tasting at the hotel. On day four, we travel to Neptune Staircase, which is a series of eight locks situated on the Caledonian Canal and takes around one and a half hours to pass from one end to the other. From here, we continue to Loch Linney, where we enjoy a scenic cruise before traveling on to Glencoe, which is one of Scotland's most iconic glens and gives you an incredible view of the highlands. Day five is one of the highlights of the trip as we enjoy a journey on board the Jacobite steam train. Uh, during the journey, you will travel along the shores of Loch Linney and past Ben Nevis, the UK's tallest mountain. And after some free time in Malague, we carry on to Inverness by coach where we spend three nights. On day six, we take a cruise on Loch Ness in search of Nessie before visiting Urquhart Castle, a 13th century castle which sits on the banks of the loch. Day seven, we enjoy a, a rail journey on the Kyle Line, which travels from Inverness on the east coast of Scotland over to the Kyle of Loch Elsh, a small fishing village on the west coast. Uh, now, it may not be as famous as the Jacobites or the West Highland Line, but I would actually argue that the scenery is even more spectacular than what you will have experienced so far. Uh, so this is definitely a, a hidden gem of the trip and something that is uh, very, very popular uh, once people have done it. Uh, once we arrive in the Kyle of Loch Alsh, we visit uh, Eileen Donnan Castle, uh, which is another 13th century, century castle located on a small island in Loch Duick. Day eight sees us travel back to Edinburgh from Inverness through the Cairngorms, which provides more stunning scenery. The journey takes around three hours and you should arrive back into Edinburgh in the afternoon. Uh, so it gives you some time to look around the city as well. We enjoy a farewell dinner as part of a Scottish evening, which will include a traditional bagpiper as well as traditional Scottish dishes. After breakfast on day nine, you are free to begin your journey home. So just some highlights that we've talked about a bit already. Um, and I think uh, this is one of our most popular tours just because it's a great introduction to Scotland uh, where you get to see some of the major landmarks uh, and also journey on some of the most iconic trains uh, and just to experience the scenery as well. Um, I have roots in Scotland, so I've been traveling there my whole life and uh, I'm still not bored of the views and, and I don't think it's, I ever will be and I don't think it's actually possible to be either. So uh, it's definitely somewhere that I would, I would highly recommend traveling to. And so here are just some of the images uh, of the places that you'll visit on the tour. Uh, the main picture we have is Glasgow uh, with the university in the foreground. At the, in the top right is Dewart Castle on the Isle of Mull and below that is Inverness. The bottom left is Oban where you take the ferry to Mull uh, which you can see in the centre uh, and then finally you have Urquhart Castle uh, on the banks of Loch Ness. So this is the Kyle line, uh, which also features in the next trip that uh, I will talk about. And obviously I talked about it a bit earlier as well. Um, it's just a, a standard Scott rail service. Uh, takes around two and a half hours in total and uh, you'll actually almost wish it was longer once you're on it. 
So we're going to move on to our second tour now, which is the Highland Adventure. So this is a five day, four night tour. Uh, and again, it is fully escorted. Uh, it begins and ends in Inverness where you will spend the four nights in the same hotel. Uh, Inverness does have an airport, which is around 20 minutes from the city center. So it is very accessible. Uh, alternatively, you can fly into Edinburgh uh, and take the train up to Inverness, uh, which I mentioned takes around uh, three hours. On day one, there are no excursions planned, so you are free to arrive at your leisure before meeting your tour manager and the rest of the group for dinner in the evening. On day two, we transfer over to Fort William for a journey on the Jacobite steam train. Uh, after free time in Malague, we travel back to Inverness, stopping en route at Commando Memorial, which is a monument dedicated to those who served as commandos in World War II, and Fort Augustus, a small village on the shores of Loch Ness and the start of the Caledonian Canal. On day three, we have a journey on the Kyle Line to the Kyle of Loch uh, and a visit to Eileen Donnan Castle, uh, which I went into previously. On day four, we, have, uh, we travel on the historic Highland Railroad, we first travelled to Aviemore by rail before joining the Strathspey Steam Railroad for a short but spectacular journey through the Cairngorms National Parks to Broom Hill. From Broom Hill, we travelled to the Culloden Battlefield and Visitor Centre, which was the site of the final battle of the Jacobite uprising. Uh, we then returned to Inverness for um, uh, your final evening meal at the hotel. After breakfast on day five, you are free to begin your journey home. Again, just a few highlights of the tour. Um, although it is only a five day tour, you do get to enjoy three of the most scenic railroads in Britain. So it's perfect if you're just looking for a snapshot of, of Northern Scotland, uh, but also wanting to experience the rail journeys as well. So just uh, a few more images. Uh, so in the um, top left, we have uh, Eileen Donnan Castle. And in the top right is Fort William with the uh, Culloden uh, battlefield underneath. The bottom left is probably one of the most familiar images when people um, start to view Scotland. And that's the, the Glenfin and Viaduct with the Jacobite steam train traveling across it. And then in the center, we have uh, the Strathspey Steam Railroad. Uh, and then in the bottom right is the Cairngorms National Park. So the next train that we will talk about is the Caledonian Sleeper, which is used on the next two tours that I'll run through. This is a premier overnight train service connecting London and Scotland. Standard accommodation on board are in club rooms, which include twin bunks or a single bed and an ensuite bathroom. And there is also the possibility to upgrade to a Caledonian double, which comes with a fully flat double bed. All cabins are non-smoking and are equipped with individual temperature controls, Wi-Fi internet, charging points and dimmable lights. Travellers who, who choose club rooms or Caledonian cabins enjoy priority access to the club car lounge, where you can relax in a pleasant atmosphere and purchase light snacks or a drink at the bar. Okay, so on to the next tour that I'll run through, which is our Castles and Wildlife of Scotland tour. This is a seven day, six night trip, and like the previous tours, it's fully escorted. However, this is one of our small groups tours, so the group size is no more than 20. Uh, which makes it a bit more personal uh, and allows us some experiences that aren't possible with a larger group. On day one, you meet your tour manager and the rest of the group in London at Euston Station, where you will board the Caledonian sleeper for an overnight journey to Inverness. Following breakfast on the train, we transfer from Inverness to the Quayside for a dolphin spotting cruise along the Moray Firth, where it's estimated around 130 bottlenose, bottlenose dolphin live in the waters off the coast. After the cruise, we transfer to our accommodation for the next two nights at Tulloch Castle. On day three, we journey on the Kyle Line over to the Kyle Lovell Lock Alsh and visit Eileen Donnan Castle. 
and we leave Tullock Castle on day four and continue further north to Allerdale Wildlife Reserve, stopping off at Dunrobin Castle along the way, where you will have some free time to wander around the stately home and gardens before continuing on to Allerdale, which is a 23,000 acre highland retreat. And you definitely get that sense of being remote and rural as there's, there's nothing surrounding you but the highlands. Uh, so it's a really kind of unique experience. Allerdale is one of the largest privately owned members of the re rewilding project in the UK. And regular schemes include tree planting, a captive breeding program for the Scottish wildcat and relocation project for red squirrels. After time to settle in, you enjoy dinner cooking. You enjoy dinner cooked by your own private chef who specializes in traditional Scottish cuisine. Day five is a full day guided four by four adventure through the wildlife reserve, where you will hopefully see herds of red deer as well as eagles uh, amongst other things. On your return to Allerdale, you enjoy a talk about the history of the reserve and their rewilding projects. The following day, there is some free time at leisure before we travel to the Culloden battlefield, before transferring back to Inverness. We then board the Caledonian sleeper again for our return journey to London, arriving back into Euston station on the morning of day seven. So some highlights of the trip include getting up close and personal views of Scotland's oldest castles, uh, the beautiful natural wildlife of Scotland uh, and journeys on its renowned railways as well, uh, all in a small group setting. So it's a much more, as I said, uh, much more personal experience. So again, just a few images of um, some uh, of the sites you can experience on the trip. So the uh, the main picture is Dunrobin Castle, which you will visit on your way to Allerdale. The top right are the dolphins in the Moray Firth, uh, and below that is the Culloden Battlefield. The bottom left uh, is Eileen Donnan Castle. The centre is, uh, is London, obviously. Uh, and then in the bottom right, uh, you have the Kyle of Lockhouse. So the penultimate tour that I'll, we'll, I'll be uh, talking about is our Edinburgh, Glencoe and Isle of Skye tour. So this is a nine day, eight night tour. Uh, and again, is one of our small groups tours. So the maximum group size is 20. As with the previous tour on day one, you will meet your tour manager and the rest of your group at Euston station before your overnight journey up to Edinburgh arriving on the morning of the second day. You have the rest of the day at leisure with which to relax or explore some of Edinburgh's beautiful sights. The morning of day three is also spent at leisure, so you may wish to visit Edinburgh Castle or Holyrood Palace. Uh, alternatively, you can take a walk up to Arthur's Seat, which has some incredible views of the city. Uh, and one thing that I would always recommend doing as well is visiting the Royal Mile, uh, which makes up the old town of Edinburgh. So there's, there's a lot of history in that area uh, and a lot, also a lot of small shops um, which are selling uh, traditional Scottish goods. On the afternoon of day three, we take a guided underground tour of Edinburgh at the real St Mary's Close. And this is something that we don't get to do on any of our other tours as, as it's actually closed off for larger groups. So again, it's one of those unique experiences that you get on this, uh, this small groups trip. We leave Edinburgh on day four, traveling over to Glasgow before traveling on the West Highland Line, which is regularly voted one of the best rail, rail, railroads in the world up to Fort William. From here, we transfer to our accommodation for the next two nights in Roybridge. And after dinner, we enjoy a whiskey tasting and talk about the production of whiskey. On day five, we travel to Aknacarry to visit the Clan Cameron Museum to learn about the history of Scotland and its clans during the Jacobite uprising. We enjoy some free time for lunch before visiting the West Highland Museum uh, in Fort William in the afternoon. Day six is one of the highlights of the tour as you journey to the Isle of Skye via the Skye Bridge. On the way, we will stop at Eileen Donnan Castle for a photo opportunity and to explore the visitor's center before continuing to Skye where we visit Armadale Castle. This is another location closed off for larger groups and we have, guided, we have a guided tour of the castle as well as having some free time to explore the gardens and castle grounds. 
We enjoy afternoon tea at the castle before a ferry takes us back to the mainland where we dock in Malague and then transfer to our overnight accommodation in Glencoe. On day seven, we travel to Fort William before a journey on the Jacobite steam train to Malague. And we enjoy free time in Malague for lunch before our return journey. The morning of day eight is spent on a leisurely stroll on the West Highland Way, which is Scotland's famous long distance walking path. Uh, it actually begins in Milne Gavi, which is just north of Glasgow uh, and continues up to Fort William uh, and is about 95 miles in total. We enjoy the views of the Highlands as we head toward the Glencoe Visitors Centre. And the afternoon is spent at leisure in Fort William before we board the Caledonian sleeper for our return overnight journey to London, arriving on the morning of day nine. So again, just a review of the tour and some highlights. Um, I think with this tour, uh, more than most, you get more of a sense of Scotland's culture and its history just from some of the museums and, uh, and castles that we visit. Uh, and obviously visiting Skye is always a highlight for people. Um, and it's one of the places that I used to visit when I was younger um, and go on a lot of vacations there. And it's always a place that, that I love going back to. So um, I would certainly kind of recommend this trip if, uh, if Skye is on your bucket list. So some images that you can uh, that you'll experience on this trip. Uh, so the main picture is the Commando Memorial, which I mentioned on our Highland Adventure Tour, uh, dedicated to all the commandos who served in World War II. At the in the top right is Portree on the Isle of Skye, uh, and below that is uh, is Skye itself as well. Uh, on the bottom left is Edinburgh with uh, Edinburgh Castle, which you can make out in the background. In the centre is Armadale Castle. And then on the right is Glencoe. And so our final tour today will include the Royal Scotsman, uh, which is Scotland's overnight luxury train. The sleeping cars provide 16 twin and four single state cabins, each providing a comfortable and intimate area to relax and enjoy the stunning scenery of Scotland. Each cabin has its own private bathroom with shower, wash basin and toilet, constant hot water, high quality toiletries and fresh towels every day. Each bed is furnished with one feather and one foam pillow, uh, feather duvet and cotton quilted bed covers. Other facilities include a lower bed, dressing table, full length wardrobe, hairdryer, individually controlled heating, cooling ceiling fans, opening windows, and cabin service call button. So yeah, extremely a uh, luxurious train. And so the final trip that I will talk about is the Royal Scotsman, Scotland's classic Splendours tour. This is a five day, four night trip with all four nights spent aboard the Royal Scotsman. This trip is an independent tour, so you will not have a tour manager on the trip and won't be traveling as part of an escorted group, uh, giving you more freedom to explore in your own time, as well as various different excursions with which to choose from. So we begin at Edinburgh Waverley Station, where we board the Royal Scotsman before traveling north across the Firth of Forth via the Forth Railway Bridge. You enjoy afternoon tea on board as you travel through the Scottish countryside to Keith in the northwest of the country. On day two, we leave Keith and travel on the Kyle line to, uh, over to Plockton on the edge of Loch Carron. Here there are a choice of excursions, including a boat trip to see wild seals, a guided tour of Eileen Donnan Castle, where you can enjoy traditional Highland welcome at the Plockton Hotel. Dinner tonight is formal, followed by coffee and liqueurs in the observation car. On day three, we travel from Plockton to Garth to visit the Glenord Distillery, which is one of the oldest distilleries in Scotland, founded in 1838. There is a tour of the distillery, as well as a private tasting session, after which we continue south to Carbridge to visit Ballindalloch Castle. Options here include a private castle tour, nine holes of golf on the castle's own golf course, or an exclusive look at what is Scotland's only single estate distillery. After an informal dinner on board, a traditional Highlander entertains guests with tales and weaponry displays. 
Day four, we journeyed by coach to Rothley Mercus Estates in the Cairngorms National Park, where excursions include fishing, clay pigeon shooting, or a tour of the estate. After lunch on board, we disembarked to visit Glamis Castle, which was the childhood home of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, for a guided tour of the castle and gardens. After returning to the train in Perth, there is a formal dinner followed by entertainment. Your journey comes to an end on day five as the train heads south back to Edinburgh. Just a recap of some of the highlights uh, and the, uh, the image you can see that is uh, Balindalak Castle. Uh, and just some more details about the train as it is one of the most luxurious trains in the world. Um, all of your meals are included on the trip with a full Scottish breakfast, three course lunch and four course dinner, including cheese board, coffee, tea and petit four, as well as all your beverages, including alcoholic drinks. There is traditional entertainment on board and between destinations, you can also experience authentic cultural activities. There is also a 24 hour steward service, as well as access to an onboard spa. Uh, so it really is the, the height of luxury. And again, just some images that you can um, you can experience on the trip. Um, in the main picture is the Cairngorms National Park. And then in the top right is an onboard view of the Royal Scotsman, uh, which I think shows the luxurious luxuriousness of the train. Uh, and then beneath that, you have Glamis Castle. In the bottom left, um, we have Perth, which is actually just a really nice city to walk around. So I would definitely recommend that uh, if you have a chance and you if you have some free time in Perth. And then in the centre is another onboard view from the Royal Scotsman. And then finally, on the right again is Ballandalic Castle. So those are just uh, some of the the, um, the Scotland trips that uh, that we have to to show you, and I just wanted to recap the tours that we covered today, and show you the variety of tours that we have. Uh, so we have escorted tours, which include the Edinburgh Highlands and Islands, and Highland Adventure, where you will be travelling as part of a group, and will be fully escorted by a tour manager from start to finish. And then we have our small groups tours, uh, which include Edinburgh, Glencoe, and the Isle of Skye as well as our castles and wildlife of Scotland. Uh, again, these will be fully escorted, but have a maximum group size of 20. And finally, our luxury tours, which in the case of the Royal Scotsman tour uh, is also an independent trip, which means you'll be traveling independently. And in most cases, this gives you the freedom to tailor make the tour to exactly what you were looking for. Uh, lastly, I just wanted to talk a bit more about um, upgrading your experience, which is which is possible on the majority of our independent vacations. So whether you want to add excursions or extra hotel nights, or even just to upgrade the hotel or class of service, uh, it's possible on most of our independent packages to customise them to what you are looking for. Uh, so please be sure to speak to your rail specialist for additional ideas. Uh, thank you so much for listening, uh, and I'll now, I'll now hand you back over to Kristen. Thanks, Graham. So moving on, we're going to um, kind of wrap up with our second question, which is after everything Graham talked to you about, what interests you most about a Scottish vacation? So uh, please feel free to submit those answers in the GoToWebinar question box. And I'll give you a few seconds to submit your answers and see what you have to say. So far, it seems that the majority of you are saying the itinerary, which is awesome. A lot of our Scottish uh, Scotland products offer a wide variety of itineraries and plenty of things to do and see. Some of you have even said um, the wildlife spotting opportunities, which is also fantastic because there is a lot of wildlife to see in the countryside of Scotland. Um, so moving on from that, I'm going to give you a little bit of information of how you can learn more about our destinations, costs, itineraries, and more. So to do that, you can go online or call a rail specialist to request any of our available brochures. These uh, feature some of our highlighted vacations, um, or you can go online and view our full 
collection of vacation packages. And to do that, you can call us at 877-929-7245 to book. Um, you can go online at www.vacationsbyrail.com. So I'm just gonna uh, put up the information for you to see that. All right, yeah, just again, 877-929-7245. Um, Feel free to call us at any time or go online at vacationsbyrail.com. All right, so I'm going to open it up for some questions that you may have had for our uh, during our presentation, excuse me. Um, if you missed it at the beginning, you feel free to submit any of the questions you may have in the GoToWebinar question box, and um, Graham can answer any of, our, any of your questions you have about our Scotland product. Um, for the sake of time, we may not get to all of your questions, and that's totally okay after the presentation. A real specialist will reach out and follow up with you regarding your questions. So no worries if you don't hear your question answered today. So to get us started, Graham, um, our first question uh, is, are the independent tours customizable? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, most independent tours offer the upgrade, uh, the experience option, which I, I talked about briefly um, just before. So yeah, if you want to um, to add additional excursions or um, you know choose different excursion from from what's on offer, um, the class of service upgrades um, or you know transfers, kind of anything like that, it's uh, it's possible on I would say you know 99% of the independent trips that we run, we can always tailor make it to to exactly what people are looking for. Awesome, thank you. Um, so our next question is, do you recommend a pre or post night hotel? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So whether it's an escorted trip or an independent trip, we can always arrange uh, pre and post night hotels, um, which obviously allows you extra time in the, the origination city if you just want to explore. Um, but also if you just want to kind of adjust to the time difference as well, depending on, on where you're traveling to. Um, so additionally, also kind of some flights might not arrive until late at night. And, and if the tour starts early in the, the next day, then uh, it's always something that we recommend just to um, to be able to um, make sure you're there on time and, and adjust to the time difference. Great. So our third question is, how are single riders accommodated? Yes, yeah, single riders are always welcome on all of our tours. And, and for us, for our escorted trips, I would say there's always usually at least three or four uh, single travelers. So the pricing on our website is uh, per person based on double occupancy. Uh, so the single occupancy price uh, will be different depending on the trip. Um, but single riders also receive their own hotel room, so they won't be sharing with another single. Great, and um, we are running a little bit over. So just for the sake of time, I'm going to ask you one more question. And that is how many weeks prior should a trip be reserved? Yeah, that can be um, quite difficult to answer. It, it basically varies on the tour. Um, some tours can be reserved within a matter of weeks. Um, others you have to reserve further ahead just because they tend to sell out faster. Um, often depends on how many departure dates we have for a given tour uh, as well, as well as the popularity. Um, if you're interested in small groups tours, though, I, I would always recommend reserving those as soon as possible, um, just because we tend to not have as many departure dates uh, as the standard tours, uh, and they do tend to tell do tend to sell out quickly. Um, one other thing is that, uh, yeah, we cannot make reservations within two weeks of a departure date either. All right, so um, I'm just gonna wrap up any other questions we have. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out or continue to ask them. Again, a rail specialist will be in, um, in touch with you to make sure that your question gets answered and that you get the information you need. So no worries if you didn't hear your answer question, if you, excuse me, if you didn't hear your question answered this time around. But I'm going to um, wrap up our online presentation today. Thank you so much for attending everyone. We look forward to sending you a brochure that you requested or hearing from you by calling us at 877-929-7245. And be sure to be on the lookout for our special offer exclusively for rail attendees. Also, be sure to keep an eye out for more information on next week's online presentation, Best of Switzerland Scenic Training. So that will be on Tuesday, May 12th. And um, we will see you then. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day.